G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome yourselves back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 10 more aircraft that should be in War Thunder. And I know there is plenty of things that I could add to this list. I have done a couple of these videos, so go check out a couple of things in the description and also in the cards. Also, thanks to everyone who's purchased a something with my decal link. I greatly appreciate it, helping me pay for new hardware. Also, to note that everything in this list isn't, well... They're in not, not in any order, there's not any biases, I just happen to like aircraft, and so give me them, Gaussian, please. Alright, let's start off with number one. I've actually done a video on how this particular aircraft ended up in Australian hands, as that is in Australian markings right there. This is the Donnier 24K. This particular version was captured, well, it was flown over by the Dutch in, in three configurations, and anyway. Essentially, what you get is a maritime patrol vehicle with a crew of four to six, and basically three engine, about 330 kilometers an hour. Basically, you get a two 20 millimeter cannons and a couple of 7.92 millimeter machine guns, and 1,200 kilograms of bombs, or 2,600 pounds under the wings. So a pretty fun aircraft. Either way, it's gorgeous and it's a float plane and War Thunder needs more float planes. Number two on the list is quite an interesting one. It is possibly the worst defense fighter of World War II and that being the Bolton Paul Defiant Mark I, although there are several different variants. Anyway, what you get is a hurricane body that has been extended and then you've basically put a four gun turret in the rear because why the hell not? Essentially, what you get is a very mysterious looking vehicle which doesn't have any forward firing armament, although the turret could be locked forward. Uh, later variants did have a single machine gun for, for forward firing, and I believe there was also a planned version to have more machine guns than that. But again, this aircraft is desperately missing from early stages of War Thunder. It'd be f bloody fascinating to play this one. Anyway, number three is the Aleutian Isle 20 from 1948. This ugly bastard is basically a Soviet prototype for a heavily armed ground attack aircraft to replace the Isle 10. And yeah, they only made one of these things, but it had notable for, well, its cockpit characteristics, the way it had the rear gunner, uh, the wing area, and obviously, generally, the way it pointed its guns down, which was a first for many Soviet aircraft. Essentially, had something that travelled 515 kilometres an hour, it was armed with four Shavak cannons and then a turret, and then it could also basically carry 1,190 kilograms of bombs and four RS-32s. The program was cancelled basically because the pilot couldn't actually see where he was landing, and so, you know, putting a cockpit over the engine proved to be a bit of a risk to your pilots. Now, it wouldn't be in a top 10 video without mentioning something from France, and this is the SN Case 212 Drandal. I can't pronounce that correctly. Essentially, it's a French dual propulsion fighter sporting a reactor with an afterburner in addition to a rocket motor. Absolutely crazy. They did make two prototypes with these particular things, and it could reach speeds of Mach 1.57. It's got a slightly higher thrust than a Super Mystere, uh, and essentially it could be a nice delta wing that doesn't fly by a wire that would be a good predecessor to the almighty mirage 3 although armed with air to airs the guided missiles or and two davers it basically gets the r5 11s air to airs and it can also equip the nords if you really want to this thing would be fascinating to have uh, as a vehicle in war thunder Next on the list is the first operational jet for the US Navy. Essentially, this is the FJ-1 Fury. First flight was September of 1946, and, well, they needed a replacement for aging other Douglas and Ford aircraft. So, for that, they decided to basically strip this thing and give it, well, you know, 547 mile an hour speed limit, which is about 880 kilometers. A decent sort of power plant, which is an Allison J-35 uh, turbojet, and then they also gave it guns, 650 caliber M2 Browning machine guns with 1,500 rounds in total. Something that could really fill the US sort of early uh, jet development period and, well, out see the super props. Number six on the list is the Convair F2Y Sea Dart. What you get is an American seaplane fighter aircraft that also happens to be a jet aircraft. First flew in 1953, they retired in 1957. They built five of these things. It has a massive giant skis underneath in order to, well, 
basically try to you know use it's basically the only seaplane to have exceeded the speed of sound which in itself is quite impressive and they did love the uh, supersonic uh, interceptor aircraft designs that were coming out of the 50s now i've got a top speed of about 695 mile an hour about 1118 kilometers at well about mark 1.25 Armed with two air-to-air -air missiles for the production aircraft, the rockets in a folding uh, sort of configuration, and Colt 12 cannons times four, you get something that is quite desirable, and I do want to see this particular seaplane in War Thunder. Keeping in tune with our seaplane sort of uh, extravaganza, number seven is the Aichi M6A1, and this particular aircraft is a submarine-launched dive slash torpedo bomber although it was also designed as a fighter at the same time but also not so interesting one at that because it's armed with one 13 millimeter main cabin type 2 machine gun hold a type 91 torpedo and two 250 kilogram bombs or one japanese 850 kilogram bomb now more than it doesn't really need another japanese bomber or type like that but it certainly is interesting and would be particularly useful in some cases Speaking of useful aircraft, this is the Lockheed S3 Viking, and number eight on the list. Essentially, what you get is something that does about 795 kilometers an hour, about you know 429 knots at max 0.79. You basically get something that can hold 10 500 pounders, two 1,000 pounders, two 2,000 pound Mark 84 bombs, uh, a bunch of cluster bombs, two uh, torpedoes, and a bunch of other things as well as nuclear bombs, six mines or depth charges two AGMs and two other harpoon missiles. So yes, a huge amount of things as well as just different avionics and radars. And who doesn't really want a vacuum cleaner or the war hoover as it was called uh, by its crew because it sounded so uh, distinctive. Number nine on the list is a NATO reporting name of Fenser. And if you know those, that definitely means that I'm talking about the Sukhoi Su-24. Essentially, it's an all-weather attack aircraft slash in, in basically interceptor. And essentially what you get is a Mark 1.6 capable bomber, but also fighter because the list of sort of things that it can also hold are incredible. You've got your anti-radiation missiles, you have air-to-surface missiles, and your air-to-airs, R60s and R73s, as well as hard points for 8,000 kilograms of ordnance, S5 rockets, S8 rockets, etc, etc, as well as various cluster bombs. So yeah, a very interesting machine that uh, could potentially uh, ruin top tier, because it is a sweat wing fighter at the same time, but also a bomber. I, I, it's one that I quite like the look of, it's mean looking, and yeah, that's about it. And for number 10, we have the Atlas Cheetah, because, well, we've already got the Kefir in-game, we've already got the Mirages in-game. It's about uh, time that we actually saw, well, the result of very strange politics, because this thing is basically a Mirage. So, what you get is Python anti-air-to-air missiles, you also get Mantras and your Magics as well. You can get laser-guided bombs and GPS bombs. There are a, a, a multitude of BVR missiles as well. You can get SNEB rockets and it's armed with two 30mm cannons for a top speed of about 1390 kilometers an hour or about 860 miles an hour. This thing is basically a mirage. And that about does it for the top 10 list. I wouldn't say it's a top 10 list, but it is a list of 10 more aircraft that should be in War Thunder. If you haven't followed the playlist, there is a heap of other aircraft that I've talked about a couple of times now. And if you've enjoyed the video, why don't you tell me your top 10 aircraft that you would add to War Thunder uh, right now. Well, not even top 10, or 10 aircraft you'd add right now, because that'd be fantastic. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for watching today. I really, really appreciate it. And to everyone who has you know, supported me on the channel recently by purchasing my, uh, my decal, you've helping me get basically more hardware. I know this video was a bit ad hoc and rushed, I'm pushing for time, and last but not least, since there was Twitch drops this weekend, I plan on to be streaming for the whole entire period. It's an 11-day Twitch drop sort of a, a bond, you know, fest, uh, and, and, and I plan to be streaming every single day that I can possibly stream. Mind you, I also have work in the meantime, so it's going to be pretty interesting. Other than that, enjoy the Sturm Tiger event. We'll probably see you uh, again in a video soon. Now, 
Now, what should I have for tanks? Um, who knows? Alright, my name is Ash. Catch you next one. Bye-bye.